hours. So I think if you can just bear with us, because we are going to do breakout groups, and what we'll try to do is take some groups to other rooms so that there's just enough space. So those of you in the back are welcome. Hello. I won't make you stand for long, so maybe just for a few minutes. And then um, I'm going to ask for patience as we manage logistics based on what everybody here wants to talk about. Sound OK? Can you hear me clearly in the back? OK, great. I am going to hand over to the Wikimedia Foundation board chair, and then I will come back and be logistics oriented. Um, Shani was supposed to join online. Ah, the panel. The panel was over. OK. Maybe can you tell us when she joins so that we can pause and Lenar wave at us when Shani joins, and then we can just invite her at that point. OK. Uh, the Open Conversations with the Board of Trustees is uh, uh, hosted by the Community Affairs Committee of the uh, Board of Trustees. So we just wanted the chair, uh, Shani, to give a few uh, words of welcome. So welcome, everyone. Um, I'm just going to give a very short things that maybe all of you should just hear before we are actually going to go into separate conversations. Uh, each table kind of has like a separate topic, so we can have more people having conversations. The logistics would be all on Mariana <laughs> based on the uh, demand. Um, so to say. Um, so we just wanted to not bore you with a lot of details. Uh, tomorrow we are going to have a lightning talks with uh, board candidates. Uh, there would be board elections coming up uh, soon. So I just wanted you to make sure if you're here online or offline, you would find time to listen to the lightning talks of the candidates. Um, and also uh, one another point of uh, communication is that Wikimedia Foundation launched um, uh, Wikimedia Foundation Bulletin as a communication centrally, oh. <laughs> uh, com uh, trying to communicate centrally from the Wikimedia Foundations uh, in the Wikimedia projects. So if you haven't checked it, please subscribe so the Wikimedia Foundation can know that it helps. Uh, or not, uh, this is an experiment. If you show that you are subscribed and you want this information to be coming in that way, that would be the best, like vote with your, uh, I don't know, with your talk pages. Um, and, uh, oh, Shani, if you are online, you can speak. Hello, everyone. Oh. I just wanted to say hello. I'm really missing everyone this year. I was really uh, looking forward to this Wikimania, but um, circumstances have not allowed me to uh, participate physically with flights canceled due to the situation here in Israel. I'm really, really happy to host everyone for this open conversations with the Board of Trustees. We are usually doing these open conversations every quarter and once every year is always saved for Wikimania. We have a lot to discuss as a movement this year, and I'm hoping that you find this platform um, fruitful and a, a safe space to engage with either online or in the room with us, and we remain open to continued conversations after Wikimania, and I hope you enjoy. I'm handing over to Nat, just because I'm not there, it doesn't make sense for me to facilitate. Um, so thank you, Nat, in advance for taking my job to do that. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to also say that uh, we had project birthdays in July and August, Arabic Wikipedia, South Azerbaijani Wikipedia, Wikibooks, English Wikibooks, and Indonesian Wikibooks. So, and now with that, um, we are having the tables. We're not serving food, not even cookies. But we are going to serve topics, and Mariana is going to read you the menu. Yeah. I know some of you joined. We're going to just be in this crowded space for a few minutes, and then we will find space for everybody. It is going to require some flexibility on logistics, because we want to be 
demand oriented to have tables for the things people want to talk about. So it may just require a few minutes of um, logistics. I wanted to do two things. One is to explain the proposed format for the session and to say a few things about the movement charter, which is an assumption that some of you are here for that purpose. So I will do both of those things and then we'll move into um, some of the conversation spaces. If I can have the next slide. Uh, if I can, maybe just ask the trustees listed on the slide to stand so that we know who the members of the board are. And I know that um, the room is quite crowded, but maybe if we could just go around, uh, some of you are known to others and some of you are new, just maybe to quickly introduce yourselves by name. And Luis, I'm gonna start with you and then we'll work our way around the room. Uh, just our name? Yeah. Luis Bittencourt Emilio. I'll see you around. Thank you. Victoria Dorodina. Thank you for passing the mic around to make that faster. I'm Kathy Collins. Jimmy Wales. Raju Narisetti. Uh, Daru Shimelnik. Lorenzo Laza. Rosie Stevenson, good night. Mike Peel. Great, thank you all. Thank you. Trustees can be seated. Next slide. We have uh, identified six potential topics for discussion and allocated um, trustees to those. If there is a different interest in topics, we may shift things around. The first is on the movement charter, and what I will say briefly is that's really a conversation about the charter itself. The foundation has issued an open proposal on the areas of funds distribution, product and tech, and the affiliate landscape. Each of those topics has their own table, as you'll see from the slide, as well as a table responding to emerging threats around disinformation, censorship, and litigation. There is a uh, table five, which is really focused on the financial model and revenue and financing of our movement, online fundraising, Wikimedia Enterprise, the endowment. We have the community trustees from the endowment that are here with us as well, Patricio and Phoebe, thank you. So what I might do without giving you more is ask for a bit of a show of hands on interest in those topics, and then um, we'll say a few things and, and see. If you think that you're interested in talking about the movement charter, uh, the charter itself and not the experiments, would you sh raise your hand just so I could get a sense of the room? Okay. <laughs> a hand, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, if you think you're interested in talking about the global uh, funds distribution and the open proposal on uh, a committee to help imagine that, can I see a show of hands? Okay, that looks like about one table. If you think that you're interested in talking about the product and tech, both priorities and the product and tech advisory council, which is another open proposal. Okay, that looks like about a table. And if you think you're interested in talking about the financial model revenue uh, streams of the movement. Okay. And if you think you're interested in talking about disinformation, censorship, litigation issues. Okay, that doesn't quite feel like everybody. Oh, I'm sorry, what did I miss? Oh, the affiliate strat, thank you very much, sorry. Affiliate strategy and hubs. Okay, I think the dilemma we have is it feels like there's one table per topic, but a lot more people in this room. So maybe, maybe what we'll do is we'll pick two topics and have a, a group move to another room so that just that we have space. Does that sound okay? So why don't we just decide that now? Elena, if you could stand up, wave your hand. Let's just agree that the, um, uh, global, no, that one's online, sorry. Can we just agree that if you're interested in the product and tech priorities or the product and tech advisory council, if that's the topic you're interested in, Elena is gonna lead you to another room so that we have space there. 
So Luis and Vicky, Selena, all of you will follow Elena. Not yet, sorry, not yet, not yet, in, in one minute. I just want to get the logistics because I think when we finish speaking, everybody's going to talk. So Luis is, has the sign, Elena, that group will move to another room. And then if we can um, actually have the revenue model and financial strategy, I know there's a lot of you sitting at this table, so where's Manar? Manar will know what room to lead everybody to, and then this group that is related to the financial model, we're gonna move you to another room, and then we'll have the remaining four topics in this room. Is that all clear? Does somebody wanna ask me a clarifying question? Layla? Probably not. Okay, but hold on, nobody go anywhere yet. Hold on, just one sec, okay. So I, the, the last thing that I wanted to say, even though it feels like there's um, folks here who may or may not want to focus on the charter itself, I do want to say a few things and then invite uh, Darish, one of our trustees, um, to offer a bit more detail. I communicated last week that uh, the foundation had really tried to onboard and hear a number of avenues of feedback related to the movement charter, and I simply wanted to repeat a few things that I said in that communication so that um, at least everybody in this room has heard it and maybe we can control some of the misinformation uh, that is happening in other rooms. I wanna repeat that the foundation, which includes the board of trustees, is very committed to a movement charter. I personally would like nothing more than clearer roles and responsibilities, and we want to see that happen. We want to see that happen. We had offered to use the time at Wikimania to really engage in conversations and hear from various stakeholders, and that both has happened and is happening. The board had an opportunity to gather this morning to really think about how to take forward some of the feedback that we have heard here at Wikimania, and has proposed that the governance committee of the board, which is chaired by Darius, who will come up in a moment, be an accountable space for us to be able to continue those conversations with all of the stakeholders that are here. And so I just wanted Darius to say a couple of words and then we'll break out into our breakout rooms and we can all answer questions about this or any other topic. Thank you. Uh, I wanna start with acknowledging the amazing work that people on the MCDC committee have done. I think it's been a lot of work, uh, more than we could have ever imagined. Now, the way to move forward that I think we're going to do within the governance committee. We wanna move quick, but not too quick. What we are going to do is gather feedback from stakeholders. We also provide you, the community, with a way to provide feedback. But we're also going to rely on the foundation resources to sum up the, feed, sum up the feedback that we already have. And in particular, we want to map the agreements and disagreements between various ideas that were there. So basically we will map it down, boil it down. And then we're going to propose a process, again, transparently and openly with the stakeholders. We're going to propose a process on how to come down, sit at the table and see what can be distilled, what can we take from there. Our view is that we shouldn't wait until 2030 for this to materialize, but we also shouldn't do this like ad hoc today so I urge you to think, reflect, think what kind of feedback you can provide us with. And over the next uh, couple of weeks, maybe even days, but probably weeks, we'll give you a channel and also start working on this sum up. If you feel like you wanna ask me something, feel free to approach me. During the break, feel free to join the charter discussion if this is up, up your alley. Uh, ultimately, we'll have something that we'll all be proud of, I hope. Thank you. If this is a topic of interest, Darius, uh, and this table will be focused on the movement charter. Rosie, if you can raise your hand, that is the table for affiliate strategy and hubs. Next table, yeah, and Mike are sitting, that is the table that will focus on the global resources distribution proposal. Elena is going to lead the way for product and tech. Manar is gonna lead the way for the sustainable revenue strategy. And then this table here will focus on, we can put the tables together depending on size, we'll focus on um, disinformation litigation, trust issues in this very important year of elections. Is everybody clear? Go, go.
Mariana, can you say something about the online participation to people? Mariana, if you can hear us, there were no instructions to online participation. If you can give instructions to people who want to be able to participate in these discussions, please do so. Hi there. Those joining online, please, uh, you'll be at uh, the hybrid table, which is going to be table three, uh, the Global Resource Distribution Committee. So. Uh, we're still setting up in the room. The feed will switch uh, in a few minutes. So if you hang on online, you'll be joining Table 3, uh, the Global Resource Distribution Committee. This one works. Uh, just an instruction for the online participants joining table three. Sorry, in person participants, you can ignore this, but the online participants joining table three, you'll be able to see through the camera the table. At the table, uh, they're all waving at you. Uh, at the table, there's a colleague that's going to be uh, that that will be looking at the chat and relaying that to the table. Uh, and I think the one speaker that's joining online is joining through a laptop. 
So I'm going to hand over back to the online table. Okay, so the mics now work in a way that people online will hear us, but not people in the room. Okay, great. Oh, that great. Was, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but whoever's speaking will talk to the saying. computer. Yeah. So okay. we have two mics. Okay. Yeah. So I think, Mike, are you going to open this up? But we need to shiny? make sure that everyone is away from the mic. Which is like a talking stick. Okay, is this going to go everywhere in the room? No. No, no that's okay. Okay, so our focus is going to be on um, the proposals being put forward for uh, Global Resources uh, Distribution Committee. You have to speak louder. Okay. I have to talk louder, right. Unfortunately. CO2 is not great in here, but anyway. Um, so our topic is the proposal for a Global uh, Resource Distribution Committee. So at the moment we have a set of seven regional committees which are look at, looking at how you distribute funding within each region. Um, what we used to have back in the day was the Funds Dissemination Committee, which was looking at the global picture and trying to understand how all the different pieces fit together there. And it seems there's kind of, between the two, they both work very well, but there's a mismatch between what they're able to do, that they can't look at a global perspective from regional pers um, groups. So what we're looking at is doing some refinements to the individual groups, which hopefully Al can explain, but also having more of a global body which is looking at what makes sense for distribution, what makes sense for not just sharing money, but also sharing responsibility, sharing um, responsibilities but for doing things around the world and looking at how that is most, going to be most effective, not just... Or, not having foundation doing everything, not having big affiliates doing everything, but sharing roles, sharing responsibility, and doing that in an equitable and fair way. So I hope that's a reasonable introduction. Yael, do you want to? No, I think more? we have a whole session. We have a whole session on this topic. Sorry, I'll take my mask off. We'll have a whole session on this topic at 5 p.m. today. Anyone who would like to join is welcome. We're particularly interested in hearing from regional fund committee members, former FDC members, and affiliate EDs or affiliate staff, but it is open to anyone. And I think the purpose of today is just to hear what you have to share, particularly with both um, Mike and Shani here as representatives of the board. Uh, hi. Mate, can, can we let uh, someone facilitate? Sure. Okay. 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 Okay.
So it would be great if there was one group that has a global overview, sees everything uh, per money. Second thing, they could also compare programs between regions, which is something that we are now lacking severely. We have programs running in different countries, different regions, but we do not compare how effective they are. Thank you. Uh, can I make a request? Could someone start an etherpad? And are you are? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. If you send like if you send me a link, I'll take notes notes with you. Okay. Thank you. I'll send it to you. Thank you, I don't know how to send it to you. Um, and I just gave a response to that that um, I'm one thing to bear in mind is that we do have a limited amount of resource that it's not going to continue increasing exponentially. Um, so it's always going to be trade-offs between if we do this, what do we, what do we not do in place? And that's something we need to consider across regions. If we want to increase funding for Global South, which is my understanding we do, that means Global North has to have less money through central processes which is different from raising funds within own regions and figuring out ways of getting large grants, getting small grants within those areas, working with governments and other things. Um, so it's a whole big picture that all needs to link together. And also, I think it's important to bear in mind, Wikimedia is in a really good position um, because there's a, quite a bit of money compared to what we're asking to do. So if you look at astronomy, which is a field I'm in, maybe 10% of grants get funded. And that's about it. Here, we're in a much better regime where most grants get funded. But you, we're still getting to the point where everyone's growing, everyone's adding staff, everyone's doing more, and the pot is staying the same or increasing slower. So we will need to bear that in mind. I just want to add that for context. Yeah, I kind of want to... Uh, uh, do introduce yourself as well. Uh, yes. Hi, uh, I'm Andrew. I'm from Wiki Journal. Uh, but my daytime job is working in the government. So... Uh, when I hear that, like when a when a hub runs out of funds or another hub has substantial amount of uh, leftover money, I would actually see that as probably just a poor management of the uh, overall budget, uh, and that means if the, if this was to be resolved, there needs to be the the fund managers across different hubs to actually communicate and say like I have this much money left or I am in deficit of this much. And so that they talk to each other and try to figure out if there's a way to transfer the funds over uh, so that there won't be a shortfall or a substantial leftover that gets clawed back by the foundation at the year end. So uh, kind of going back to my own point, uh, I really uh, I see there is a need for the global uh, distribution committee, uh, committee uh, because some projects that are funded are global in nature, like Wiki LGBT, a uh, Wiki woman. Those are uh, those are th those are focusing on like across nations or even across continents, and using the current regional hub funding model, those don't work because it it may cost a lot of money to run events in uh, central uh, uh, central relatively central and East Europe. It might cost even more if you're running uh, in, in some areas in ESAP, but a lot less within ESAP itself. So, and how are you going to apply which pot of money when your event is global, uh, when, when your target audience is global? I think it's also, sorry? Okay, sorry. Hi, it's Isla from uh, Wiki in Africa in Cape Town. Um, I think it's also important for um, the Wikimedia world to have kind of like standards, like almost like a database of how much things cost in different places and what the, you know, what, what the limitations and what the issues are. So like obviously putting events on or uh, holding meetups or holding those kind of things. So you, we have like a, a better understanding of kind of like the, you know, if we were going to start another, how much they would need in order to get started or what, you know, so it allows for the uh, movement to budget, you know, exponentially uh, uh, across like scope and scale. So as well, because then we can gather those kind of information, that kind of information together. Yeah. 
It's so weird to talk into the microphone and it not get louder. <laughs> it's very trippy. Um, Isla, do you imagine that to be a role for this global committee or could you imagine that being a role for each regional committee to put together? So I think it, it's a funnel, yes? So I think it would be something that the regionals would gather and then collectively the global would make the, you know, would have the resources and be able to make decisions globally because they would then have information from each space. So, um, I mean, we've all been hit by, um, you know, by cost of living explosion and then all of those kind of things, but also um, exchange rates fluctuate hugely. And then that also impacts like what was cheaper last year is no longer cheaper. There's a whole range of different things. And I think if we have that information being fed constantly, we're more uh, agile. Thank you, uh, Mati here again. This is a question and also uh, a proposal. Some of the issues with grant making in the Wikimedia movement currently come from a difference in financial years between major organizations and Wikimedia Foundation. This cannot easily be changed because it would not be good for the foundation to change it. And for example, in Poland, this could not be changed at all. It Do you mean... Um I just want to make sure I'm understanding. You're saying that the Wikimedia Foundation's fiscal year is on a different calendar than affiliates' fiscal yes, year. Yes, exactly. And that leads to uh, where the affiliates are applying for money, uh, especially in the winter round. It's the middle of the foundation financial year. Uh, so one thing that this committee could uh, take a look at once formed is either changing the timelines of the grant system and accelerating it, in my opinion, to a way that when foundation is planning its budget for the financial year, they already know how much the affiliates are going to ask for. Because currently we are in a system where the foundation is planning the budget, they do have the budget approved, and then the affiliates start asking. And, and the, like, okay. yes, and the foundation can reasonably say, well, we didn't plan that much, or this year we planned too much. <laughs> Let that be a problem. But, uh, because of this change, uh, because of this lack of overlap in financial years, uh, additional planning needs to be involved. Unfortunately, adding overhead in bureaucracy for the affiliates, but could lead to better transparency and understanding of the system. Uh, I'm Delphine. Uh, I, uh, I was a member of the FDC. I was then supporting staff to the FDC, the Funds Dissemination Committee. Uh, and uh, yes, I've been involved in governance and grants for quite a long time. Um, I think that uh, to answer your, your thing, I think that even below, uh, beyond what you were proposing, which is, and I'm pointing to Isla, uh, uh, proposing which is a database of how much things cost, I think it's about the strategy of where do we want to invest our money? And I'm not even talking about the, I'm not even talking about the impact. I'm talking about the fact that uh, so far, we've tried to impose uh, on uh, the rest of the world the the idea that uh, it takes a few volunteers to grow, to, uh, to become a chapter, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when I think that in many, many countries in the world, it's actually not the way we should have been working, but we should have invested in actually actively developing uh, 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 chapters or groups or whatever you want to call them uh, on the ground, probably partnering with people in the countries that were interesting for us uh, uh, as a movement, rather than uh, just say, okay, let's have uh, first a little grant, then a bigger grant, then a bigger, bigger grant, then a much bigger grant, uh, etc. And I think that's something that we really need to look at and that this body should really think about. Um, if it happens, it's really about thinking, uh, 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 we do have uh, the northern uh, uh, chapters or the, the western, whatever you want to call it, global north, that already are established, etc. And we are kind of expecting everyone else in the world to have the same kind of growth uh, thing. And I think it's actually a mistake. I think we, we might be able to invest 100,000 in a country that has very, very little community to actually grow that community and uh, to take advantage of, uh, again, existing partners that do things that is in line with our work. Uh, uh, but that might be uh, uh, don't have the time or the resources or the cultural kind of background to be volunteers and grow something to be a bigger thing. Uh, so that's one of the things that I think uh, uh, is very important. Just to respond to that, if I can, that um, 
I think even within um, Europe, there's different contexts. So not everyone's been Wikimedia Deutschland. And I think it's one of the strengths probably of the regional committees that they do hopefully understand better the local context and understand what will work in different regions in a way that could not be done so well on a global basis, which led to the Brazil and India experiments that were disastrous and things like that. So I think the combination of having the global and the local really might help here. Um, Me first? Okay, um, my name is um, Teslima Abdikarim from Nigeria. Teslima Abdikarim from Nigeria. So, um, sorry I joined in late, so, but. Well, speak for us. Yeah. Okay, you can't hear me. Wow. Well, it's for the Okay, I get that now. Okay, my name is Teslima Taya Abdikarim from Nigeria. So I would like to contribute um, as regards um, the annual planning and funding and all that. So um, one of the things I would like to propose is that um, there should be a kind of, aside all these um, affiliate conference, maybe ESIP, uh, Wiki in Daba and all that, there should be a kind of collaboration whereby we should have um, a kind of mixed uh, <laughs> conference whereby it's uh, especially closer um, regions. So instead, instead of we having just Wiki in Daba and ESIP or um, from the dual band conference and all that, we should have a kind of um, mixed one. For instance, um, uh, any other continent very close to Africa, we can have a kind of um, meetups then that way we would get to understand ourselves better. We know um, how the things are in my region. You, you know how things are in your own, I mean, I know things, how things are in your own region. You know how it is in mine. Then whenever we want to plan and all that, then we can we can actually um, put that together and submit it to the foundation. That could be a kind of way in helping with funding, in helping with um, um, collaboration, in helping with uh, managing resources as well. Yeah. I wanted Crystal, Crystalina on the wikis. Um, I wanted to add on also on what Ayla said about this cost of living, but I don't think it's just the costs of the things. It's also what is needed in different countries to run programs. For example, there's a lot of countries where for volunteers having enough internet um, data to upload pictures is expensive, while in other countries you just normally have this as a normal person. And it's not necessarily countries in the global south versus global north, but I know in Bangladesh internet data is pretty cheap, while in India, the neighboring country, it can be horribly expensive. And so also knowing that um, getting to a venue safely, um, transport is very different. It's no issue to take a bus in Germany. It's a real issue to take a bus in India for a woman. So having also a list of those things that are needed when you run a program, um, in addition to that, what does it cost? Because if we run this in a way that <coughs> also security for conference venues are um, very different what is needed in Germany. I don't need a lot of security. I need some security or here in Poland. In some other countries I might need a lot more security. So also having an idea of, of just what is needed to run good programs um, I think is very important. Online question. Um, on behalf of Chipmunk Davis, from the proposal, it is unclear how the gl new global body will interact with the regional bodies. If the regional fund committees are still handling individual grant proposals, how involved is the global body in that? What is the scope of their monitoring review activities? Thanks for the question. Um, so the first thing I'll say is the proposal does not sketch out everything. It's intended to be a skeleton, and this is the work, I think, of us in the movement to, to decide. What we have proposed is that the global uh, committee be responsible for things like global programmatic metrics, what are we as a movement trying to achieve, um, setting standards across regions, and dividing um, I think this gets to your point, Andrew, understanding how much budget should go to each region. 
the proposal for the regional funds committees is that we change them a little bit in the sense that we run elections so that the committee members are not appointed by WMF staff, but rather elected and therefore accountable to their communities. But those regional funds committees would still be the primary committees responsible for reviewing grants. So to make it really um, specific, the global committee would not review individual grants. Regional committees would still review individual grants. The global committee is taking on the big picture, how much each region should be allotted each year, how do we think about global thematics and uh, grants that aren't regional by nature, and thinking about standards and metrics and guidelines across the whole globe. Hello, um, I'm Lina. I'm the new head of the Colombian chapter. Nice to meet you all. I'm also new to the movement. I came from the humanitarian uh, work scope. I want to say two things and get, uh, adding up, English is not my first language, so bear with me. Adding up to the cost of things and the specific needs of things. I also think that we have to take into account um, what are the aims of the breaches that we want to close uh, in the overall conversation between the Global South and the Global North. And also, I want to know if you, of if this committee will foresee um, that that if we are um, fixing problems like we are uh, or we are looking in advance and foresee for example and I work in climate change and I really care about that how that global themes and global problem will affect the distribution of resources. So my observation, so I'm, I'm Jenny, I, I come from the US and work on different projects, one involving credibility, one involving um, taking pictures. So <coughs> my main observation is that in terms of the global north, or at least the US, there is other funding out there. So it does the, at least in theory, the U.S. affiliates do not have to depend on the um, the foundation. I know Wikiad kind of does that, but there's a lot of confusion sometimes from funders, the foundation versus the affiliates. Also, I, I can say that some of the U.S. affiliates, the, at least the the geographic ones, are not mature enough to take like large grants, but they they probably can get there. So, I think there needs to be sort of support or endorsement from the foundation in a more structured way. <coughs> On, on pro and also kind of like to at least minimize the sense of competition because you get the, oh, we already donated to Wikipedia thing when you're trying to talk to them about a, a more grassroots project. So in terms, I don't know if this that's a global council kind of level thing or that's more of a um, like a U.S. level thing with the with the foundation. But the, the idea is you can wean at least some of the Global North organizations off of money um, coming from the foundation that can be invested where, in places where there's just not enough philanthropic dollars to go around. Um, uh, Jenny, I, I think that's a great point. And North America and Europe are the two regions where we really find this, is that while we are saying, and as Mike said, like these are areas where, where affiliates can and should be raising their own funds, there is an unfair element of competition that comes up where people are going to WikiEd, you know, WikiEd is going to a grant maker and say, and they say that we already founded the foundation. So what we have done this year is, she started on Monday, is hired a um, affiliate training, affiliate fundraising training consultant, and her job is to work with affiliates who are interested in fundraising and help them build their own fundraising um, capacity. And one of the goals that we've asked her to come up with is um, laying out guidelines for how we collaborate and don't poach funders so that it's very clear kind of how how we can collaborate with affiliate entities as we say, you need to be raising your own funds. How do we support that and come alongside that? So I think very well taken. Yeah, so I 
I'm, I'm yeah. next in line. If that's um, yeah. yeah, and I'm I was next in the queue. Um, I actually don't think that uh, there is so much funds available for everyone uh, out there. I don't think that's. Can I would be actually interested that you listen to me when I say this. So. I actually don't think that there is there are funds out there for the stuff that we're doing. I think supporting communities, Wikimedia communities, if there were real funds, we would have found them by now, and we haven't. Uh, there is a philanthropic, very US-centric, or even, uh, I want to say, Anglo-Saxon kind of way of doing funds, which works a bit in the US, but it doesn't work everywhere else. Wikimedia is not interesting to the EU, etc. So we, we will find funds. You, I think that a good example is uh, Wikimedia so Sweden, for example, but they have always done projects that are kind of on the side. So yes, we can also always do projects on the side. We will have thematic, uh, as you were saying, thematic funds. We might find money for that. But I don't think that the very core of our being, which is supporting communities to actually participate in the project, is something that can be funded by anything else than us. And I am very, very clear about this. I think it's been 20 years like this, and I don't know how it's going to change. Uh, there is an actual um, essay by, uh, by Sue Gardner a very long time ago, and as much as Sue is not my favorite person in the world, uh, she did write something about uh, the fact that our funding model, which is funding by little people, by people like you and me, who put 20, uh, 20 bucks to actually support Wikipedia, is probably the only viable funding model, etc. So I think that... While I do believe that for, again, thematic things, you might find the climate change, whatever, uh, will actually support uh, a, a few chapters to do things, etc., well, and things like this. But at the end of the day, it is always going to be the small people uh, supporting the small people doing Wikipedia. Um, and for this, I think that it's really important that we start thinking, how do we make sure that the people who support us on a day-to-day -day basis, the, the, the $20 person that gives $20 to Wikipedia, you know, how do they feel that they are really represented across the world? Not just in the in the countries where they are, etc., but really that they uh, uh, that they find this kind of loyalty with Wikipedia. We help them through, um, we help them through uh, college, we uh, help them through school, we help them to like uh, uh, getting an education and things like this. How do we make sure that we keep this this conversation going with them and say, hey, can you support us longer and further for the things that we're doing? So I want to be very very careful about the whole global north, global south, et cetera, et cetera. I do believe that this is something to keep in mind. So I think it's important to bear in mind there are, um, in each country, there is going to be some sort of centralized funding, some sort of government funding available for things. That may not be much in some countries, but there's always going to be some processes there. Within EU, there are standard processes for applying for grants. It becomes a lot of paperwork, a lot of bureaucracy, um, but they do exist if we wanted to go down that route. The advantages as well of working on a national basis are that you get contacts. So you get to know people in these funding agencies, in the governments, in the philanthropic organizations around it. And that can lead to in-kind things um, and contact with others and everything like that. There's a whole network can be taken advantage of there, which can only be done locally, not on a global basis. This is not to say that the online donations are unimportant or anything like that. They're hugely important. But I think we do need to consider diverse funding streams here as well. And the advantages of local fundraising in local contexts is really important. I'll just answer for, to make it very clear. To me, it's about the core funding of core communities. That's it. Like anything on the side, fine. But this, like the work, the basic day-to-day -day work. Stuff. Sorry, can I, I, I'm going to add to that because I have like 12 years experience, well, 14 years experience of this. And um, essentially, coming from Africa, there's a very, they all, almost all the funding is directed towards very basic, you know, life threatening stuff. And so us going in and going, hey, we want to make the world a better place because it's a very niche, very exclusive space for them because it's the high end of education. They're looking at the three R's at the moment, you know? So I, I think it's a, it, yes, it is a good idea to have local funders and whatever. And the only things that we've been able to get is partial project specific funding. We can never get um, organizational funding, getting 
negotiating over five years to get organizational funding was a game changer for us from the Wikimedia Foundation. They didn't do it before because the anyway the, the changes within the Wikimedia Foundation have been absolutely critical for us and it's always on a good it's been a much better trajectory. So that's the answer to that one. But I also just wanted to ask it, I know that it's obviously this is a board implementation from for the foundation, but there are other players within the within the movement that also fund, and some of that. And I'm I'm only talking in like details because that's just what occurs to me now. But it doesn't have to be limited, as in the the cost of living thing. Um, but at that collaboration between, and I know there is communication between, but it allows people to. You know, go and ask Wiki, uh, Wikimedia France for a, a, an, a grant and then come to you guys and then go to somebody else and then, you know, and and that that collaboration, that, like, oversight needs to probably be tightened down a bit more. I, I also want to hear from Sandro as a former FDC... Or, no, sorry, not former FDC, um, but you run the grant-making in Wikimedia Deutschland, so I don't want to jump your queue, but before we wrap, I want to make sure we hear from you yeah. as well. Three minutes and we have three people. <laughs> Yeah, just. Just, just. This rebuttal is not about the committee itself, so yeah. maybe we can hear. Like, this is a really good yeah. conversation, but it's not actually about the committee, which is our goal here. So maybe if people. I'm have asking whether that would be considered. Can I just very quickly read a, just answer to that? That. Um, I think we need to explore those options here, that we need to be all on the same table. We can't have funds shopping. So having I, this is a proposal. Um, it is flexible. We can adjust it depending on what we think we need. So do raise that on Wiki and do try to bring people who are doing funding elsewhere in the movement to this table and discuss it. Things are, can change, basically, are open for discussion. Let's hear it and then not respond, if, if maybe, because we have only three minutes yeah. and three okay. people. I'll make, it, I'll make this very short. Um, for whatever the mechanism it is, just be mindful that there are, like, uh, as what Daphne said, it's a lot of grassroots movements, so a lot of them do not have experience writing grants before, yeah. and it becomes a, egg and, a chicken and egg cycle. Mm -hmm. You do you are not able to hire someone to, to have experience writing grant because you were not successful in getting grants, and it's not just a global north, global south thing. Even in uh, Canada and US, there are tribes and indigenous organizations who likewise are in the same situation, So yet they are often the ones that are on the ground and able to effect the biggest change and whatever <coughs> mechanism we need to remember that. Sandro from Wikimedia Deutschland, thank you very much for this point. I also want to go to this problem. Um, when we are supporting volunteers at Wikimedia Germany with grants for their own projects, for their ideas, it, we learned it's very important to help them to, to get to a good grant, um, uh, uh, to a good request of a grant. That's not easy. Also in Germany, a lot of volunteers have great ideas, but they don't know how to get a, a concrete idea of how to solve the problem they see or how to make the project as good as they can do it. And a lot of people don't know how many does a project can cost. And they need to help. And looking at the bigger picture for the Global Resource Distribution Committee, it is important to help the people with any kind of resources, uh, learnings, um, resources to talk to each other, uh, learn from each other, uh, do capacity building uh, in, to, to this important point. To wrap up, Crystal Kritzelina again. Um, I would just like for the Global Dissemination Committee, or whatever we're calling it, sorry, I'm bad with those uh, names, um, perhaps to also keep an eye on the landscape of what kind of external funding is possible in the region. Mm -hmm. Because I think in Europe there are just more possibilities to do this external funding. I mean, Wikimedia Switzerland is okay, that's getting... That's the first example? Yeah, but, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but also Wikimedia Germany gets some external grants. A lot of the, the European chapters get. Germany is funded by its people. 
that's also that's again but that's also, there's just more possibility to also raise money themselves and so um, I think that is also something that perhaps this committee could keep track of and if they see a disparity also of there are chances opportunities possibilities but the people on the ground can't take them for the reasons you just mentioned um, to develop that capacity in the region to get grants for side projects for extra things uh, and so I think that could also be something that this council could be doing I will be quick sorry uh, I just I had a conversation with David about um, onboarding people through rapid grants and actually you know the the ASAF Asaf and Dumi's funnel of onboarding people better in, onto the communities as editors, we, we were talking about doing a similar thing for onboarding organizers in their grants program. Like they almost have to go through a, like a mini, a mini uh, certification program in order to then you know, qualify. And that might be one way of doing it so that people come into the grants program with a much better idea, but you can also get local knowledge and draw no local knowledge, and if that is a becomes a global program, then that obviously benefits everyone. You know, so those are kind of like decisions that can be made at a meta level that can then filter down. Okay, um, as regards as regards um, getting grants, I think I've I've gotten a few, and I've gotten rejected for a few too. So I kind of have experience with um, grants and all that. Um, uh, my suggestion would be that, um, because I've seen some people that are actually very cool and okay, but they couldn't get grants because they were blocked uh, indefinitely. And some of them, it's not like maybe they make disruptive editing. Some of them were blocked for something like um, socket property, um, wiki data. And I have like two or three people from my community that are or currently on that, and they were blocked like unjustly. It's not like maybe they have two accounts and all that, so that is really affecting us in my community. Then some of them don't even know that um, there's means for them to get grants because I have like 34 people that I am I'm the one that I I uh, I train kind of train them on my own personal grant that okay you can actually apply for some of these things while about four or five of them get about two of them didn't get because of this blocking that I said so like we should I'm I'm not like a really old body in my community I'm a board member for wiki project medicine however I took it upon myself we should have a kind of body in each region that would actually train people aside um com communicating with our grant manager via emails there should be a kind of um E uh, meetups, meetings with um, participants, editors on how to, they can actually apply for these grants. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for everyone that's come. Sorry, I forget. Uh, thank you um, for everyone that's come. Uh, we'll leave it there. Um, there is the OnWiki page, so do go and comment there. Join the conversations. I think there's going to be the meetup. Tonight. Come at 5 p.m. tonight if you'd like to join. Yeah. This, uh, the room um, is listed on Event Yay and on Meta. Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure out if we can do that.